So if any of you have gone through cold immersion therapy or it took in an ice bath, for example, you'll always notice when people first get in when they're untrained, it's almost like a, a shock response. Now in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the untrained breathing response or the unconscious breathing response to cold shock and how we can use the science behind that to perhaps gain control of our breath to help build the resilience and get the gains from it. When we immerse ourselves in cold water, what happens is there's an inspiratory drive followed by hyperventilation, which also increases uh, heart rate, blood pressure, as well as uh, decreasing blood flow to the brain. But initially, that initial gasp is not a breath. It's not a top-down process. What happens is when we get into the water, the skin and our body, the receptors in the intercostals, the diaphragm and the spine send a signal back up to our brain, which amplifies a part of our brain called the pre botzinger complex, which initiates an inspiration drive, our diaphragm contract and takes a big gasp. Now, because of that big gasp, following that, and because of the shock, we get an increase in sympathetic nervous activity, our stress response. So that's where hyperventilation occurs. Ventilation increases. But how it increases is interesting. Because what tends to happen because of the initial shock, we get an increase in our end expiratory lung volume, essentially moving breathing up. So it becomes inefficient to take larger breaths. The body compensates this by increasing breathing frequency. So what you'll notice is that one <gasps> takes a shock and it's a <sighs> almost like they can't breathe properly. This is inefficient like exchanging oxygen because of anatomical dead space and also physiological dead space within our lungs. That happens from about zero to one minute. After one minute long, then the lung volume slowly comes down and we still get in sustained ventilation and sustained uh, uh, breathing because there's an increase in metabolic demand for oxygen because most likely shivering and increasing metabolic demands. But the body compensates by this by actually shifting our increase in ventilation from breathing frequency to tidal volume, which is the depth that we breathe at, which is much more efficient at bringing oxygen in the body and getting gas exchange, which makes sense, right? But this is just clouded information for you right now. But what does that mean? What can we do? Well, we can try and prevent or try and take top down control from the uh, initial response when we get into water, going slowly, making sure we're calm with our breath, trying to resist that shock and urge. But then also making sure that when we get in, we're not just breathing at a dim, fast pace. We're actually breathing nice and slow through the nose, deep. Making taking deep breaths as slowly as possible whilst you're in the water. This is overriding what our natural command center wants to do within our body, our reflex response, and therefore we're getting uh, prefrontal cortex overriding control of our amygdala response as well, which is going to help us build resilience. So we're going to build breath control in high stress situations. So takeaways from this is that number one, the untrained individual has got a reflex response to cold immersion. Number two, we get sustained hyperventilation, but that's through increased breathing frequency first, which then later through prolonged exposure comes down to increases in tidal volume, making us more efficient for gas exchange. So to do the opposite, to take top-down control, is that we have to breathe slowly, avoid uh, panic, and breathe deep in and out of our nose, maybe 10 long breaths as long as possible while you're in the water for two to three minutes.